Now it's no secret that the Labrador Retriever is one of my favourite breeds on the planet and their history is absolutely fascinating and I think before getting a Labrador or if you have one you should know all about that history and how that can inform the dogs that we live with today and that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in today's video. Welcome back to the Will Atherton Labrador channel and in today's video we're going to be deep diving into the history of these incredible breeds. So I'm going to hand you over to one of my breed experts who's going to take you on that journey to learn more about these incredible dogs. Hundreds of years ago, as European settlers and fisher folk seeking fruitful seas found themselves flocking to the eastern coast of Canada, we found the foundation stock of the breed that we have come to know and love as the Labrador Retriever. Ironically, the story begins not in Labrador, but in Newfoundland, the next door region of Eastern Canada. Now, the waters off Canada, much like most of the country, were outrageously cold, barely above freezing. And so these Europeans who fished the waters brought with them their dogs to help retrieve the nets they had cast out, or indeed individual fish that had slipped the hook. Their dogs commingled with each other and with local Canadian dogs, and the St. John's water dog was formed. Some have argued that this was a native land race already and that the European immigrant dogs merely developed it. Regardless, a relatively stable dog was formed, largely because the perfect recipe was either accidentally or deliberately arrived at. The resultant dog was resilient to the brutal bite of the icy waters. It was formed with webbed toes and a water-resistant coat that made swimming a breeze, and it was so biddable and eager to please that it fit the working role it was tasked with to perfection. So impressed with the developers of the St. John's Water Dog and its incipient progeny of variants, that the British fisher folk brought it back to England, where it would perform stunning feats of athleticism and waterborne majesty for its adoring crowds it had become something of a celebrity. As a result, several noblemen of England demanded that the best representatives of the emerging breed be imported to be bred from and developed, perhaps with the involvement of other breeds and perhaps not. Before too long, the Labrador dog, as it was mistakenly but appropriately called, given that Labrador comes from the Portuguese word Labrador, meaning labourer or worker, was a household name in England. Originally an outrageously good water dog who excelled in retrieving both in and out of the water, with some breed development, the Labrador quickly began to show its immense versatility. Because of its keen drive and athleticism, it thrived in almost any job it turned its hand to. Whilst too friendly and docile to be particularly effective in protection or attack roles, or even watchdog roles, it was nevertheless a hit with both dog show enthusiasts, as dog showing became a thing in the mid 19th century, as well as early dog lovers seeking a family pet. The 20th century saw the breed standards in development, noting the increased density and languor of the show dog that was emerging, particularly in England, where dog showing first rose to prominence. By the 21st century, where we are now, the Labrador Retriever has diverged into quite distinct separate lines of working and showing dogs. Unlike most diverging lines of dog, a working Labrador can usually be distinguished from a show Labrador on site. The working dogs are leaner and more athletic, looking quite similar to a Hungarian Vizsla, and are equipped with a great deal more drive, whilst the showing dogs are heavier of bone and more affable and mellow, having perhaps more in common with a Mastiff. It is usually from the showing lines that the best pets have emerged, though not always. There are also breeders nowadays who are exclusively breeding Labradors for companionship roles, given the unstoppable rise of the Labrador as the global family pet of choice. Working Labradors might also now be subdivided into traditionally purposed workers who retrieve and work in rural and agricultural settings, and the service dogs who have been trained to sniff out everything from drugs to arson to cancer, or to see for the blind or provide emotional support for those with PTSD. Despite the monumental rise in the popularity of the French Bulldog that threatens to topple the Labrador Retriever as the current most popular dog in the world, the Labrador has been uncontested as the most popular breed in canine history and shows no sign of losing that title anytime soon. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to learn more about one of my favorite breeds in the world, the Labrador Retriever, make sure you subscribe to this channel because it's exactly what it's designed to do and I can't wait to see you on the next episode.